Hey everybody, I'm CJ. Uh, just wanted to talk to you guys briefly about something I just picked up. It's the Behringer X-Touch Mini. Um, and it's a it's a little fifty dollar MIDI controller, which is typically not uh, super common in video production. Um, but I've basically turned it into a control surface because uh, there's lots of great MIDI uh, integration with vMix. So um, let's get into the basics. Swing this over. Um, so the first thing is up here on the top, we have all these dials and these can operate as volume control is what I have them set for. Uh, turning it, volume up, volume down. Uh, you can see that here with the music. Volume off, basically. Bring it back up. Bring it back down. Uh, and you can cut it off. Uh, so I have it to where when you press, it will toggle uh, the audio source. So it will either allow the audio through or uh, cut it off. It will not adjust the volume. It doesn't mute. And it also does not stop the source from playing. Um, I'll get into how I did that in a little bit. This one here is my mic control. So I should be getting louder, quieter, louder, etc. Um, I actually just recorded an entire one because I did this. And I talked for 10 minutes and it wasn't there. This one will be shorter than 10 minutes now, though. So that's volume controls up here at the top. Um, over here, I have the fader. Um, so this fader is set to be a T-bar. Uh, next to it, I have a cut. I have a fade. And then all through the bottom here, I have... Pre here, I'm going to swing into something really fast. I'll talk about that in a minute. So here I have, um, get this to clear. I don't think I'm going to. Okay. So um, I have a row of preview at the bottom, just like a normal control surface, and then a roll of the programs at the top. And I'm keeping all of my like master stuff over here on the right. Uh, the third one here is not actually preview program three it is my overlay it's overlay number four um, which is just I'm using that to show you guys uh, the close-up of the control panel control surface uh, do, do, do so that's what's happening preview one two four five six seven then we can cut we can fade we can T-bar all of them. Um, one thing that, that this does have is the layers here. So I'm on layer A. I have everything set on layer A. And then layer B is going to be a completely different set of buttons. So everything down here can do different stuff than up on layer A. Oh, boy. That's not something I've noticed before. So it does look like if you hit the layer you're on again, it's going to reset what's going on there. Ooh, that's something to remember. Um, so <laughs> if you're on A and you want to reset all your audio to zero, hit A again. So I'm not sure. If the master turned off there, I'll find out in the recording. But anyway, A, if you hit the layer again, it's going to erase all of your settings on your on your volume settings. Um, I want to show you guys how to do this very briefly. Uh, I'm also going to have a... Uh, I'll have this exported, all the shortcuts in the activator, so that you can just download them and put them in then you can play with them there so each one 
This is preview input one, so that's right here. And how you do that is you go to find, you press the button, it's going to tell you which button that is. So that will populate this stuff here. Then you select the function, there are a lot of functions. Preview input is the one we're using for this, and then choose this. I have it assigned shortcut to input number. This one's pretty useful. So all of these are, you know, by default when you start vMix, inputs one through eight show up in your multi view. So inputs one through eight, I always use eight for my clock, um, are here and you can change those to match up to what you want to see on your multi view. And then that will also match up with your MIDI here. If you click the, um, what was it? Assign shortcut to input number. Now, if you want to do a program, so the top row I have set up here, um, it's active input. So that just activates the input, sends it straight to program. Uh, got fade, cut, those are these two over here. Set fader is, is the T-bar. T-bar. Um, and then up for the top row is set volume. So set volume allows you to turn stuff up and down. And then audio, which is my press, is the one that turns the volumes or that turns the audio source on and off. Mostly I have these all just assigned to the input. And then this is my mixer that's over here. And this one is my music list. Where did my music go? There it is. That's one thing. I, I wish there was a way for it to show that it's off or on, but I don't currently have that set up. I'm sure I could figure out some way to do it, but right now you do have to pay attention to your uh, audio mixer in vMix. Uh, also using set master volume. That's over here. That's my last one. So this is the master for everything. Um, and instead of being able to mute that, I have it literally so that you can't disable it. The the press on there uh, toggles the audio mixer box in the vMix controls. Uh, I think that's about it. Oh, we did want to talk about activators. So back in settings. Down here, activators. Um, I just have it set for the buttons right now so that if the input is live, this top row is going to light up in with the corresponding input. I also have these set to input number. Uh, so the input will change except of course for my overlay four. Um, and then input preview that's going to show in the bottom row. So that if the input is in preview, this light is going to light up. Uh, you do when you when you go to do this, you have to enable the device, just the X Touch Mini. Uh, I believe that's the same thing for shortcuts. Yeah, you just have to make sure that that's checked. That's about it. Um, hope this was useful, and I'll catch you next time.